just feel so helpless with, with Jamie. I, I just don't know what to do anymore. He takes on more and more. He just can't take this pressure he's putting on himself. Oh, Sandy, I don't know what to do. He just never lets up. He never lets anybody help him with anything. Actually, he's been much better about that lately, Cecile. We've been working together quite well. It's taking them so long. Why aren't they down here to tell us something? I'm so worried about them. I just don't... They had to move him out of ECU to someplace upstairs. Why? I don't know, but I'm sure Rick will be down here to tell us what happened as soon as he can, okay? What about Mac? Did you call Mac? Yeah, I did. I felt he should at least know that something had happened to Jamie. You didn't tell him No, exactly. I just told him that Jamie had had an accident at the party. Well, did he say he was going to come down here or, or well, what? Well, he wanted to, but uh, I told him we'd fill him in on the details later. I just knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it. Jamie has been acting so, so weird. He's, he's just not the same person. He's, he's acting so strange. He's not Cecile, the person Cecile, look. I Cecile, just calm down, okay? I'm sure that whatever it is he's going to be fine. He's probably just sick. That's probably all there is There's to it, Rick. okay? Rick, will you tell me what is happening? Can I see him? Where just is he? Just calm down a minute, all right? Stop telling me to calm down. I want to know what's happening to my husband. Look, I'm afraid I don't have very good news. What are you doing to me? What's happening? What's happening? What's, what's happening? Jamie. Jamie, it's, it's all right. You're in the hospital. Hospital? Yeah. What? What? What, what are they doing? Well, we're just making sure that you won't hurt yourself. Hurt myself. What's, what's happening? Happening. Just relax, Jamie. Now, we're here to help you. Listen to me. Listen, I have to know what you took last night. Talk. Yes, what drugs, Jamie? What drugs did you take? No. Russ. No drugs. I have to know the truth. Exactly what you took. Our tests show that your system is loaded with uh, amphetamines and tranquilizers and alcohol. It... It can't be. I... I didn't... Jamie. Say, I didn't. Jamie. I don't know what you think you're doing, but that is a very dangerous combination. You could have killed yourself. I didn't take anything. I, I've been clean for weeks. I don't... I don't understand. Russ... I don't understand. Corey Residence. Louise? Yes. It's uh, Brian Bancroft. Oh, Mr. Bancroft, how are you? I'm just fine, Louise. Uh, is Sandy Alexander there by any chance? I'm not sure. I haven't seen him yet this morning. Would it be too much of an inconvenience for you to see if he's there? You were supposed to meet with me in my office this morning, and, uh, well, he's a little late. Not at all. I'll be right back. Mr. Bancroft? Yes, Louise? Sandy's not here. He may already be on his way to your office. Oh, well, yes, she probably is. Well, um, thank you for the trouble. That's quite all right. Goodbye. Bye. And now, the continuing story of Another World. What do you mean that you don't have good news? Jamie has... No, no, no. He's going to be all right. Oh. It's going to take a little time. But he had a very rough night. Will you please tell me what is wrong with him? Where is he? Where have you taken him? Why I don't understand. Sit down. Come on, come on. Now. What is it, Rick? Last night, we found these on Jamie. But I thought he wasn't oh, no. taking pills anymore. So did I. Only a few days ago, he told me that he'd be clean for weeks. Are you sure he was taking these? Yeah, we ran a lot of tests last night. He was loaded with drugs. Combined with the alcohol that he was consuming, he... Well, he could have killed himself. Oh, my... Oh, I just knew something like this was going to happen. Cecile, Cecile, come on, calm down. I'm sure Jamie's going to be all right. 
Well, where's, he, where's he now? Well, we're going to transfer him to the psychiatric unit, but that's only temporary. Is he okay? He'll be fine now. Well, what's that supposed to mean, Rick? He went into convulsions last night. Twice. Oh. We have someone with him at all times now. It's going to be rough for a while, but uh, once we start cleaning those drugs out, he should return to normal. Then what? Well, then we've got to transfer him to the detox unit for at least a week. What's that? Detoxification. It's uh, where we make sure that all the drugs are cleaned out of his system. No, no, no. I want him to come home with me, Sandy. I, I want him to come home. Now, wait a second. I think Rick's probably right, Cecile. I mean, you need to think about what's best for Jamie right now. Rick, are you sure that this is necessary? Yes, I am. Well, all right. Guess we have to do what we have to do. Can I see him, please? Sure. Thank you. Sandy. Thank you so much for everything. I don't think I could have made it through the night without you. Yeah, well, listen, uh, tell Jamie I'm pulling for him, okay? Good morning, Larry. Danny? You want some coffee? You got some right there. Oh, okay. Priest ought to be down any minute and fix us some breakfast. She said, uh, you started, uh, work yesterday. Yeah, that's right. How'd it go? Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, didn't do a whole lot. <laughs> she said you had a real fancy office. Yeah, you might say that. What are you reading there? Oh, I'm, uh, just going over these transcripts of Blaine's trial. <laughs> that can be pretty boring. Uh, reading trial transcripts, I mean. Yeah, well, I'm looking for something in particular. What's that? Oh, I just heard the D.A. say something the other day that kind of bothered me. Oh, what did he say? That's probably not anything. It's, uh, well, actually, see, it was verified that Jordan Scott was killed by a single bullet wound. Yeah. Well, I distinctly heard the D.A. say gunshots and not gunshot. Maybe it was a slip of the tongue. No, no, Zachary Colton doesn't make slips of the tongue. In fact, he's real careful. It should be right in here. Yeah, I got, I know he's, I got that right somewhere. What is it? Look, look at this, look at this. It says, uh, gunshots. Exactly what he said. Hmm. Well, maybe there was more than one gunshot. No, Jordan was killed with a single bullet. But that doesn't mean there wasn't any more gunshots. What about the gun? Did, how many bullets were fired? I'm not sure. Well, why not? Didn't you check the ballistics report? No. Why not? This is going to sound real funny, but uh, the ballistics report is no longer in our police files. I checked yesterday, and it's gone. That is strange. Well, what about Colton? Did you check with him? He might have it in his files. Well, we're not exactly on talking terms right now, either. Well, then what about the investigation at the scene of the shooting? Did uh, they turn up any indication that there was more than one shot? Well, if they did, it's certainly not in the report. Well, maybe that's something you should check out. Yeah. You're a lawyer, Denny. What do you what do you think? I mean, you've been following this trial, haven't you? Well, just what I've read in the papers. What do you think Blaine's chances are? Well, it's hard to say. She, uh, she did shoot the guy. Yeah, well, she didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, but that's not so easy to prove. I mean, all the jury has to believe is that she had a motive. And from what I've read, she had plenty of reason to kill him. Look, she shot him in self-defense. Hey, look, I'm sorry, Mary Ann. I know this is pretty rough for you. Yeah, yeah, it is. Look, I'm sorry. It's my fault. I shouldn't have jumped at you like that. It's okay. Don't, don't worry about it. Larry told me about it yesterday, and it is in the transcripts. Now, Colton definitely used the word gunshots. Now, look, I know it's a small point, but it might mean something. Well, have you asked Blaine about the shots? No, but I intend to when she gets here. <sighs> By the way, have you seen or heard from Sandy this morning? No. Well, he was supposed to be here almost an hour ago to discuss that book. Well, you want me to call him? Uh, no, I've already called Mac's house. He isn't there. Mm. Blaine, how's it going? Okay. Hi, Brian. Blaine? Blaine, I have got to ask you something. What is it, Jerry? Look, I need to know if you can remember how many gunshots were fired that night. Why? Because I think it might be important. Well, uh... I don't know. Look, Blaine, I'm not please. Sure. I... You, you've got to try to think. Jerry. Uh, please, Blaine, try. 
Jerry, I don't know. But... I keep playing that scene over and over again in my mind, and it... It happens so fast. It's so confusing. I don't know. But can you... Re just can you remember how many shots? There may have been more than one. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm sorry. Well, if it comes to you, then you can tell me. Okay, I will. I promise. Jamie, take it easy. Everything is going to be all right. It's going to take us a couple of days. We'll get the drugs out of your system, and you're going to feel a lot better. That's... I didn't take anything. I didn't... Linda. Yes, Doctor. Keep him calm. Oh, he's done. How's he doing? He's doing as well as can be expected. Mm. Look, Cecile's outside. She wants to see him. Did you uh, ask her about the detox program? Yeah, she agreed to it. Good. I think I want to talk to her before she comes in to see him. Dr. Matthews, how is he? Is he going to be all right? Yes, he's, he's going to be all right in time. I'm happy that you agreed to let him go through the detox program. Well, I only want what's best for Jamie. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick, why don't you get started making the arrangements for detox? Huh? I'll get right on it. See you Thank later, you, Rick. Can I see him now? Yes, yes, but I do want to caution you about something. He is at times delirious now. He may not know who you are or what you're saying to him. Uh, Rick told me that he had some convulsions last night. Yes. Is there any chance that that he could have them while I'm in there? Well, it's possible, you know. It's not likely. He has to be kept calm, quiet, of course. So please don't do anything to excite him. No, no, I won't. Of course not. Hmm. All right, you go ahead in. I'll be back in just a few Thank minutes. You. Jamie. Yes. Sweetheart, it's me. I'm, I'm right here. Everything's going to be fine. Dr. Matthews says you're going to be fine. Um, could I spend a few minutes alone with him? I really don't think you should. Please. If anything happens, I'll call you. All right, but only for a minute. Okay. Well, you finally made it. The psychiatric ward. Is that what you wanted? Jamie, how could you do this? How could you start taking pills again? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But if you didn't take anything, then why are you here? You almost killed yourself last oh. night. Oh. oh. What am I going to tell Mac now? What do you think Mac is going to do when he finds out? How much longer do you think that he's going to take your mistakes and your ineptitude? I think that he's going to give up on you, Jamie. Mr. Hobson, Mr. Black is on the phone for you. Oh. No, sir. The special phone. 
Oh. Uh, uh, hello? Oh, yes, it is. Uh, uh, oh, the office is great. Hey. Uh, no, no, uh, everything's fine, just, just a little slow. Oh, no, I, I haven't found a place yet. I, I'm staying with my sister. Yeah. Uh, when, I'm ready, I'm ready to go to work. Uh, the, oh, what was that again? The, an office building. Uh, 1300 Ashton Avenue. Oh, yes, sir. I'll check it out. Uh, what, what's the top price you want me to, to offer? Uh, all, all right. I'll get right on it. <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it was, uh, it was good talking to you, too. Uh, uh goodbye, sir. Here's the file on 1300 Ashton. Mr. Hobson, Mr. Black wants you to read it. Uh, thanks. Well, what do you think, Brian? Well, I just wish that Sandy had allowed me to read this before presenting it at the trial. Well, I guess that's partly my fault. See, I knew about the book. Jerry, why didn't you tell me about this? Brian, Sandy wasn't going to bring the book out unless he absolutely had to. That book belongs to people who are going to go after him now that it's out in the open. Look, I understand that he did it at a great personal risk. But getting it this late a date doesn't give us much time to prepare. And needless to say, this Zachary Colton's going to make a field day of it. I just wish that Sandy would get here. We're not going to have that much time to discuss this book as it is. I'm here. I'm sorry I'm late, but I had a personal emergency. Hey, you look beat. What happened? I was up all night. Are you going to be all right to go back on that stand? Do I have a choice? <laughs> well, we better get going. Uh, first, I have to ask you, Sandy, are you aware of everything that's in this report? Practically have it memorized. Then you know that Zachary Colton, what he can do with his information. Yeah, I've got a pretty good idea. But I felt I had to bring it out in the open to help Blaine's case. Well, it will help substantiate Blaine's claim to the existence of a book. But, Sandy, Colton's going to take you apart on the stand. And uh, everything you said to support Jerry's testimony yesterday may well go down the drain. You shouldn't drink and take pills, Jamie. I'm not taking pills. Oh, but you must be. I mean, they found them right there in your jacket pocket. I don't understand, honey. I haven't taken anything in weeks. You know that. Jamie, I... Jamie, you just think that you stopped taking the pills. You, you must have just forgotten or something. They found a lot of drugs all through your system. No. It, it can't be. Yes. Look, it's, it's going to be all right now. Dr. Matthews is going to put you through a detoxification program to clean out your system. Jamie. Cecile? I want to see my mother. No. No, you can't see anyone. Where's my mother? She's not here. No one wants to see you like this, Jamie. Especially not your mother and Mac. I... Sweetheart, it's all right. It's all right. Dr. Matthews is here, and he's going to help you now. And he's going to keep everyone out, just like you want. He's not going to let anyone see you until you're out of detox. No. He was all right. He was all right for a while, but then he, he just started shaking and everything. I, I hope nothing's wrong. No, he's going, to, he's going to be fine. Now, you've got to calm down, too. Jamie... Calm down now, calm down. We are going to help you.
Everything you'll need to know on the property at 1300 Ashton is there in the file, Mr. Hobson. He wants me to buy an office building. That's correct. Well, well shouldn't I check out other properties in the area before I buy this one? Well, that really isn't necessary. Mr. Black isn't interested in any other property at the moment. Well, wh why? What's so, what's so important about this property? It's the only building in Bay City which accommodates the heliport. A heliport. <laughs> you mean that uh, Mr. Black is going to land helicopters there? You seem surprised, Mr. Hobson. You'll get used to it. Mr. Black thinks on a grand scale. Pretty soon you'll be doing the same thing. Well, I've, uh, I've never really bought a, an office building before. I'm not exactly sure how one goes about doing that. <clears throat> Very simple. First you check out the property, you talk to existing tenants, then you buy it. Just like that. Just like that. You know, I'm, uh, I have a feeling that this job is never going to get boring. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> yes? Uh, is uh, uh, Denny here? Denny? Denver Hobson. May I ask who you are? Oh, I'm his sister. Oh, Mrs. Ewing, I'm, I'm glad to meet you. I'm Quinn. Oh, you're Quinn. Well, hi. Come in. Hey, Clarice. Well, uh, what do you think? This place is beautiful. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen an office like this. Well, frankly, neither had I. And that Quinn, I mean, she knew my name. Yeah, from what I can tell, Quinn knows just about everything. Oh. Well, so, you ready for lunch? Oh, sure, sure. Why not? Uh, I'm not real busy at the moment. Okay. One more thing, Mr. Hobson. Uh, yeah. Mr. Black requires strictest confidentiality in all matters, and that includes members of your own family. Of course. Now, Mr. Alexander, according to the information that I was able to glean from the book which you so graciously presented to us in court yesterday, you used to work for an Ilsa Fredericks in Las Vegas, is that correct? Yes. For how long? Two and a half. Three years in Vegas. You don't know for sure? I worked for Ilsa prior to Las Vegas. Oh, I see. Then you were familiar with the types of activities that she was involved in. Most of them. And then you knew that she was involved in more than just the operation of a health club. Yes, sir. Were you aware that some of these other activities involved the elimination of people who were troublesome to Miss Fredericks and her friends. I suspected as much. You suspected as much. Did you know that Miss Fredericks was a close friend of Jordan Scott's? No, no, I, I, I didn't. I found that out later. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, uh, let me backtrack here for just a moment. You said that you suspected that Miss Fredericks was involved in operations which in which various people may have been killed. Is that correct? Yes. Were you ever asked to perform one of these assignments? No, uh, no, I was not. I was never involved in any facet of those operations. Well, then what did you do for Miss Fredericks? Mr. Alexander? I, um... Uh, I worked as an escort. An escort? Now, um, what exactly does that job entail? Just what it implies. I escorted women around Vegas. That's all there is to it, just escorting the ladies around Las Vegas? Yes, uh, most of the time. <clears throat> yes, but some of the time, some of your duties as a male escort were a little more intimate than just escorting the ladies, were they not? Yes, sometimes. In fact, was not the escort service actually a cover for a very different type of operation? Was it not actually a front for a high-priced prostitution organization? And you were not just a male escort, but you were in reality a male prostitute. Yes. But I left that life after I ran from Vegas. But 
You were working for Jordan Scott at the time of his death, were you not? Well, yes, but that was part of the deal. Were you working for Jordan Scott at the time of his death? Yes. In what capacity? As an escort. Yes, the same type of escort service that was organized by Blaine Ewing and Melissa Needham. Yes. And the same type of escort service that was once established in Las Vegas by Ilsa Frederick. Yes. So, you mean you were working for an illegal prostitution ring here in Bay City? Look, I had to. I... Thank you, Mr. Alexander. No more questions. You may read the record. I just heard, is Jamie here in the hospital? Yes, he is, Rachel. Well, where is he? He's upstairs. Well, how is he? Come on over here with me. Let's, let's talk. What is it, Russ? What, what's wrong with him? He was brought in last night. He'd taken that very dangerous overdose of drugs. No, that can't be. I don't understand that. He, he swore to me he was off drugs. Apparently, he's had a very serious setback. Russ, that can't be. But, Rachel, believe me, we've done all the tests. His system is loaded with drugs. Well, is he going to be all right? Yeah, for now. I've put him in a detox program. We, uh, we'll clear the drugs out of his system. We'll help him through the withdrawal period. I want to, I want to see him. Well, Dr. Cecile Dr. has closed the room to all Dr. visitors. Well, she can't do that. I, I'm his mother. I have a right to see him. Yes, she can do that. She's his wife. And I think that Jamie has asked her to do it. I don't think he wants to see anyone right now. Why? Well, he's in very bad shape. Probably feels he can't deal with any external pressures. Well, what's going to happen to him? Judging from this latest incident, it's apparent to me, anyway, that... Jamie's problem is a lot more serious than I thought. He came very close to dying last night. Dying? Mm. Well, what are you going to be able to do for him? First of all, we're going to have to convince him that indeed he does have a serious problem, and then I would recommend immediate psychiatric help. I didn't take any. Jane, it's all right. Look, we're here to help you. You think that I took drugs? I swear. I swear, Rick, I haven't taken anything in over a month. I swear it. You know, he's so adamant about it, I almost believe him. Tess, don't lie, Rick. This Rick, is just loaded with drugs. You gotta believe Look, me. Look, Jamie, it doesn't matter now. I'm gonna take care of you. Don't worry, no visitors. Cecile told me you didn't want any. So we'll keep everyone out until you're through detox. It's gonna be a long week, buddy. But we're all here to take care of you. Where did you come in contact with Elsa Fredericks? Los Angeles. What age were you then? 17. Can you explain the circumstances under which you met her? Uh, yes, sir. Um, my stepfather was an alcoholic. Uh, it wasn't that unusual for him to beat up on me, so... When I finally couldn't take it anymore, I, I left home. Soon after that, that I... Met Elsa, and she, she felt sorry for me. Or, or at least so I thought. Uh, and she paid me to hand out towels at her health club. But at this time, you were in no way associated with Miss Frederick's prostitution organization. No, sir, I wasn't. Well, how did you become involved in it? Well, after my stepfather left my mother, she became ill and needed money for an operation, and... Uh, Elsa was the only person I knew who had that kind of money. So she loaned you the money? Yes, sir. And how did she expect you to pay it back? By working in the escort service. And this included prostitution? Yes, sir. Why didn't you ever try to get out of it? Leave? 
Well, I, I, I did try once. Well, what happened? Um, Ilsa sent uh, two of her men after me. They took me in the hospital for a couple of weeks. You mean they beat you? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, when you finally did effect an escape from Ilsa Fredericks, how was this accomplished? Well, I felt the only way I had a chance of uh, getting away safely was if I took Ilsa's record of her activities. Oh, and that was the book that was presented into evidence yesterday. Yes, sir. Now, from Las Vegas, you came to Bay City. Did you know at the time that friends of Elsa Fredericks were operating here? Um, <clears throat> no, I didn't. When previous testimony was established that you aided it and abetted Jerry Grove in their escape from Jordan Scott. Yes. Now, will you uh, please tell the court what happened when Jordan Scott finally caught up with you in New York? Well, um, Jordan and his men uh, beat me up. They were trying to get the information where Blaine and Jerry were hiding. Then uh, Blaine came to Jordan and they made a deal. What kind of deal? Blaine would go back to Jordan and I would go to work for Jordan in his escort service in exchange for Jerry's life. And then what happened? Well, it didn't take too long for us to realize that Jordan was going to make life pretty unbearable for us. So what did you do? Well, we decided the only way to get out from under Jordan's thumb was uh, to try and get a copy of Jordan's record book. And this is the book that Blaine allegedly found and is now missing. Yes. Which is the reason you produced the book you possessed. Yes, sir. I felt that um, such a book would prove that other books exist, uh, that it wasn't at all unusual for people like Jordan and Elsa to keep a record of their activities. Now, Mr. Alexander, do you believe that Jordan kept such a book? No, objection. Now, this calls for an assumption. Sustained. No more questions. You may step down, Mr. Alexander. As soon as I got your message, James. How is Jamie? Well, Russ says he thinks he's going to be okay, but it's going to take a while. Well, what happened to him? He apparently almost overdosed on drugs. I thought he was getting his life together. Yeah, I thought so too, but apparently we were wrong. Well, what's the reason for his taking drugs this time? I don't know. I, I haven't talked to him. Why not? I'm not allowed to see him. What do you mean you're not allowed to see him? Cecile has closed off his room to visitors. Well, you're not a visitor, Rachel. You're his mother. I know that. Russ says he has to go by her wishes. She says that Jamie doesn't want to see anybody. Do you believe that? I don't know what to believe. I just want to see him. I feel so responsible for all this. You know, it all started when I separated from Mac. Now, Rachel, stop that. Stop blaming yourself. You got enough problems. I mean, I love that boy as much as you do, but I mean, you can't blame yourself every time something happens to him. There are other people in his life, you know that? And maybe, just maybe, Jamie causes his own problems. Can't you understand that? Service. Dr. Cohn, please call your service. 
Amanda's taking a nap now, Mr. Corey. Oh, thank you, Louise. Shall I bring you some coffee? Yes, I think that would be fine. Are you all right, Mr. Corey? What's that? Well, something seems to be bothering you. Oh, no. No, I'm fine, just thinking. I'll get that. 